We are ready to present the probability hypothesis density filter, or the PHD filter, which is a tracking algorithm that can handle appearing and disappearing objects. Among the multi-object tracking filters, it is one of the simpler ones to implement, and it's also computationally very efficient. In this video, we cover the basic ideas that underlie the PHD filter and clarify how it approximates the posterior distributions. Like all the algorithms that we consider, the PHD filter is based on the assumed density filtering principle. As usual, the idea is that the algorithm starts every recursion by assuming that the posterior density at time k-1 belongs to a specific family of distributions. In order to be able to start the next recursion with the same assumption, it therefore needs to make sure that the posterior distribution at time k belongs to the same family of distributions. In most cases, this implies that we need to approximate the posterior distribution using a distribution within the assumed family of distributions. It is common to also approximate the predicted density using a density from the same family of distributions, but this is not a requirement. The basic idea behind PHD filtering is to approximate the posterior as a Poisson point process distribution at the end of every recursion. We have previously mentioned that the Poisson point process is not good at capturing detailed information about, for instance, the cardinality. But the PHD filter instead has advantages due to its simplicity. When developing the PHD filter, we are facing the following question. Suppose the posterior at time k-1 is a Poisson point process distribution. How can we then approximate the predicted and updated distributions as Poisson point process distributions? The principle that we will follow is that whenever we want to approximate a random finite set distribution as a Poisson point process distribution, we set the intensity function of the Poisson point process to the probability hypothesis density, denoted d of x, of the original random finite set variable. The probability hypothesis density is abbreviated PHD, and we often use this as an acronym. We will introduce the PHD, d of x, more formally in the next video. But we note that it is a function of state vectors x, and we can compute the PHD for any random finite set, boldface x. Importantly, we already have a principle for performing PHD filtering. After every prediction and update step, we compute the PHD of the new distribution and approximate the distribution as a Poisson point process with the PHD that we obtained as intensity function. An important argument for setting the intensity function of the approximating Poisson point process to the PHD of the original random finite set distribution is that this minimizes the kullback leibler divergence. Unfortunately, I'm not going to prove that result here. To perform PHD filtering, we therefore recursively compute the PHD of the predicted density, denoted dk given k-1 of x, and the PHD of the posterior density, d k given k of x. We then recursively approximate the predicted distribution and the posterior distribution as Poisson point processes with the corresponding PHD as its intensity function. According to what we learned on the previous slide, this is the best choice of intensity function in the kullback leibler sense. Now, interestingly, for the standard motion model, and given that the posterior at time k-1 is a Poisson point process, the predicted distribution is actually also a Poisson point process, and naturally, we don't need to introduce any approximations to ensure that the predicted distribution is a Poisson point process. We have illustrated the sequence of operations performed during the prediction and update steps in this block diagram. We start and end every recursion with a Poisson point process. After the prediction step, we immediately obtain a Poisson point process. The update step instead consists of two steps, where we first perform the update step using base rule and then find the best approximation among all Poisson point processes in the kullback leibler divergence sense. As explained above, to perform the second step, we simply compute the PHD of the posterior distribution and approximate the posterior as a Poisson point process with that PHD as intensity function. I would like to highlight some of the things that we have learned. A first thing to observe is that we parameterize the multi-object PDFs using the PHDs, which are functions on single object state vectors. Specifically, we assume that the random finite sets are Poisson random finite sets and that the PHDs are their intensity functions. For instance, the posterior at time k takes the following form, 
where we have e to the power of minus the Poisson rate times a product over all the elements of the set of the Poisson intensity. Please note that even though the PhD is a function on single object state vectors, we are using it to describe a complete multi-object PDF that we can evaluate for sets that contain many object states. A limitation with approximating the posterior distribution as a Poisson point process distribution is that we end up approximating the objects as independent and identically distributed, given the number of elements in the sets. This can be a fairly rough approximation in many settings. Still, the PhD filter has the advantage that it's a simple filter and that it performs well in simple scenarios. Roughly speaking, a simple scenario is when the probability of detection is high, whereas the clutter intensity is low.